The tension between bikes and vehicles is evident almost every day on the streets of Washington, D.C. The most recent statistics say there were 618 bike-related deaths in 2010, 2% 2 of all traffic fatalities. We are Skyping with Dr. Babek Sarani. Have you noticed an increase in cars versus bikes or cars versus trucks accidents? Over the, about a five or maybe seven year time frame, we've definitely noticed an increase in bicycle versus um, automobile type collisions, yes. Um, I will say that if you shorten the time frame over the last year or two, um, it remains a very constant mechanism of injury in our trauma center. What do you attribute it to? Oh, it's attributed to two things. One is the people who are trying to go green and, and stay healthy, which is great. Um, and like to commute to work by bicycle, which is fantastic. But also there is a huge amount of traffic in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Many of the bicycle trails uh, in the city are actually in the traffic. So as you notice in downtown, much of the bike paths are in the middle of traffic. And this sets up, unfortunately, the perfect storm of the bicyclist who's biking, say, with his or her headphones on, and a driver who's in a hurry, the two aren't really paying attention to each other, and that leads to the collision. We see in our trauma center alone about 150 bicycle versus automobile collisions per year. So if people were to see what you saw, what you see on a regular basis, do you think there would be changes, and what would those changes be? Number one, helmets. It is rare for me to see a bicyclist struck with very severe brain injury who was helmeted. We've seen a number of bicyclists struck with a helmet where the helmet is all but shattered and broken into three pieces. And that individual may complain of headaches, concussion, impaired memory, but they're able to complain. They are not devastatingly brain injured. The patients that we see who have very severe, oftentimes irreversible injury are the non-helmeted patients. So you're telling me that people to this day they're not wearing helmets? Absolutely, absolutely. I, mean, I don't know the statistics, but just kind of anecdotally, I would say half, maybe a little bit more than half of my patients wear a helmet, but a very large number uh, do not. I think bicycling is today where car driving was maybe 20 years ago, where you just kind of felt like, yeah, you know, I'm in the car, I don't really need the seat belt, it's not a big deal. And then, of course, uh, over time, culture changed. Bicycling, at least in the D.C. area, really only recently came into vogue as a means for transportation outside of recreation. And so we are now trying to educate the public as to the need to wear a helmet and to take safe measures. Don't wear a headphone when you're bicycling so you can hear the cars. Look around you. And one of the things that we do on the trauma center through our outreach coordinator is go out to the bicycle shops in Northern Virginia and in the district and really try to educate the clientele as to how to go about bicycling safely. Is it possible to put too much trust in the helmets and think, oh, nothing can happen to me, I'm wearing a helmet? Oh, definitely. I mean, the helmet will protect you to some degree, and as I said, it may take what might have been a devastating brain injury and convert it to a concussion or a not devastating brain injury, maybe, uh, but realize it doesn't protect you in any other way. So we've seen very significant facial fractures, people whose whole faces have been smashed in and need profound facial reconstruction because although the head was protected, the face wasn't. We've seen number of broken ribs, punctured lungs. We had one patient who was hit by a car thrown into traffic and run over by another car and his pelvis was smashed because the car rolled over his pelvis so the helmet is just you know one aspect now it protects you from probably the most devastating consequence which would be the brain injury but it certainly doesn't protect you all around it's not a whole body balloon helmets aside what is it that bikes bikers are missing what is it that they aren't doing that they that you think that they should be doing from your experience well, I think the bicyclist needs to kind of be on their game. You know, so the one patient I told you about who was struck by a car and then run over by another car, he was in his bike path. He was doing fine. The car that had parked over by the curb opened the door to get out. So, you know, part of the bicycle safety culture needs to be watching for what the other people are doing. Have this bicyclist noted that that driver is about to get out of his car. Now, the driver should have also looked before opening the door. The two wouldn't have collided. So he hits the car door, flies into traffic, and is run over by another car. So it goes to show you that the bicyclist needs to be aware of more than just what's in front of him. He or she needs to be aware of what's around him. In this case, it was a parked car that you would think is safe, but in fact, 
that car is in motion. The door is about to open. The driver is about to get out. You're about to have a collision. So it's it's really having a good understanding of what's around you and and the environment you're in at that moment in time when you're bicycling. Do you see worse accidents in the evening? Do you see more accidents in the evening? Or we tend to see more accidents in the af in the afternoon evening hours, say around four o'clock on. Uh, in general, we don't have that many bicycle collisions in the morning hours. I've, not quite sure why, because these guys are commuting to work and then going home from work, same modality, but it tends to occur more in the evening hours. Maybe drivers are more in a rush to go home, I, I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, the alcohol factor comes in in the late evening uh, into nightfall hours. Dr. Sharani, I think you've given people a lot to think about today. Thank you. Thank you.